historical data and sightings of Fasco gales and sugar gliders and even historical sightings or stories of um, the larger gliders that may have been in the area. We don't see them now, so it's still nice to get those, that data. Um, and this sort of site is a perfect area for seeing um, that sort of species. We've got bush over on one side and this lovely gully with old mature eucalypts that are perfect feeding and um, cover for fasco gales and sugar gliders to come in and feed. So your chances are if you're driving by you may see them on the road whether crossing the road or they've been hit or near your property. Um, if you do take a photo that's the best evidence there is. They can be hard to um, identify if they're just sort of running across the road in front of you but get a photo Take, a, take some points, take note where you are. Is there sort of bush around you? Is it clear? Just make a few mental notes to be able to record that or pass that information on. So some of the places we may see these, we've had reports of people's cats bringing them into the house, um, which is pretty ordinary. Um, we also you know, have people with them living in their roofs or they've set up nest boxes or they have these mature old trees with the hollows and they've managed to see them you know, scampering up the tree or scampering between trees or sometimes you'll see the gliders actually flying between or gliding between trees as well. So report that if you see it. Um, also with your nest boxes when they're put up, some people get really disappointed. They see evidence inside of nesting material and if it's really neat they love it and if it's really scrappy and it's rough and bark and there's manure in there etc or scats they get really upset and we get really excited because that's actually a fasco gale nest so the really neat tidy nest is for, for us here is the um, sugar glider but that's that really rough nest is what we're really hoping to see so if you see that don't get disappointed get really excited because you're doing a great job so the sort of information that's required to report a sighting is the date when you found the animal, the site where it was, so that geolocation or Google point, photos as well, if you can get a photo with you is really important, and the person who found the, the um, animal to make that reporting and record, because they may be asked for more information down the track. So more information is actually better than less information. If you want to be more involved in this program and not just go on historical sightings, but you're interested in being involved in current sightings, make contact and get some nest boxes set up. So you want to put those in groups of three. They found those work best. Fasco gales and gliders will move so that the predators can't learn where they're camping the whole time. So they'll actually move and use a number of hollows or nest boxes. So that's really critical. And also get a camera set up um, whether in front of the nest box or a hollow, or if you know of an area where they're going through, say your roof of your house, which we have landholders happening, um, set up a camera and watch them coming and going. And then that data will also be collected and its times, dates, etc., with everything that's required. You can submit your historical sightings via the Biolinks Alliance website. Head to www.biolinksalliance.org.au forward slash Glideways in the Melbourne Arc and fill in the form, including as much information as possible about the location. You can submit this information online via a desktop computer or on your mobile phone.